hi guys welcome to my youtube channel my facebook page my tiktok this is sichamba jacob all right so in this video we've got uh, four questions from different topics and if you are that person who is preparing for exams please watch this video up to the end and if you are that person who has been wanting to do online tuitions with js Lane academy please watch this video up to the end because there is a question a challenge that I have for you, when you manage to answer that question, you'll be added to our online classes for free. So it's only for 10 people, be that person who is going to answer the question at the end so that uh, you can be added to our online classes for free without paying anything. And please, if you want to join our online classes, remember to contact us on 0969175701 or check in the description the number is right there you can whatsapp or call will be able to guide on how you can now uh, join our online classes all right so function f and g are defined as uh, are defined are defined the function f and g are defined as so this is a mistake there's a repetition here so i defined as f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 and g of x is equal to 3x minus 5 over 2 find f inverse of x so for the f inverse of x to be found here we are going to get the function with f remember what has been mentioned here it's f inverse of x so get the function with f and when there is f write y is equal to copy what is to the right hand side the next thing here is to make x subject of the formula. So this is a, meaning you shall maintain the y, and this one will cross the equal sign, it will be minus one. It was plus one, it will be minus one, which is equal to a two x. You now divide both sides by a two, by a two. Remember guys, we are making x subject of the formula. Or in other ways, we want this x to be alone. So now we've got x is equal to y minus 1 over a 2. Therefore, we can say f inverse of x is equal to x minus 1 over a 2. This is our answer. Uh, our idea here is to change. You see the OY is alone here. We want x to be alone. So this will cross the equal sign. It will come this side. It will be y minus a one and then to remove this two we're going to divide both sides by two so that we remain with x now where there is x here we're going to write back what they've asked us in the question f inverse of x is what we're going to write and uh, where there is y here you write x maintain negative one and a two the way it is this is the answer so for the next question let me write it here this is question b they want us to find f let me cut f of g of x so here uh, we are going to get these two functions can you see we've got the f function and the g function so what will happen is uh, the f function will swallow the g function so this part will be written where x is here and this is how it's going to look like maintain the two and where there is a uh, x we write the other function which is inside here the g so it will be 3x minus 5 over a 2 plus a 1 okay so these two and the two will go we shall remain with x i mean 3x minus 5 plus a 1 of which this will simply be equal to a 4 minus 5 plus 1 it's a minus 4 this is our answer or we can say this is our f of g of x. Okay? That's it. So for question C, they want us to find f of g of 4. Okay? f of g of 4. This simply means where there is x here, write a 4. Therefore, it will be 3, 4, where x is minus a 4. You simplify, this is giving us a 12 minus 4, which is equal to 8. So this is our, or these are the answers we are supposed to get on uh, this question. 
Let's go to question two and see what we're supposed to do on question number two. All right, so for question two to be answered, uh, we write the inequalities, okay? So you can see this inequality right here, it's passing at four. Let's check nicely. So we're going to say x is equal to a four, okay? This is a line, x is equal to four. Now to show the inequality, we shall say, x is less or equal to a 4. So that's the inequality. x is less or equal to 4. It's passing right at 4. And then to the right hand side, this is the greater. It's where it's shaded. To the less part, which is this side, it's not shaded. So look at this. When you look at the line, it's crossing at 4. This side, it's where it's shaded. And the side which is shaded is greater. So what we want is the opposite, which is not shaded. So we're going to get the less, which is this side, less or equal to a 4. We can also come to this one. So this is x. Remember, it's the x-axis. This is the x-axis. So where this line is crossing the x-axis is at what? At negative 3. To show the inequality, we shall say x is greater or equal to negative 3. So you can see, when you stand at this line, the side which is not shaded, it's uh, the right-hand side, which is greater. And that's what we are getting. So we shall say x is greater or equal to 3, which is this side. Don't get this side, the less. Get what is not shaded. So we're done with that one. The other inequality here, it's this one. So we're going to write this as a y is equal to 6, the inequality is y is less or equal to a 6. Look at this. This is a y-axis, and this line is crossing the y-axis at 6. So we can therefore say y is less, the bottom is less, the top is greater. So get the less, which is not shaded, less or equal to 6. Lastly, we go to this line which is moving like this. It has got a gradient, this line, okay? For as long as the line can form two points or it's bent, can you see? It's not, a, it's not straight like it is like this. It's bent like this or like this. For as long as that line is bent or it's crossing or it's touching the two axes. So this line is passing like this. It's touching both the X and Y axis at zero. So here we can identify the point, which is a 0, 0, okay? And once we identify the point, we can now say, uh, or we find the, the equation of a straight line, okay? So how do we get to find the equation of a straight line here? We're going to get the points. So we've got 0, 0, and 4, negative 3. So there are two points. Here it's a... 4 comma negative 3 here it's 0 comma 0 okay we now find the gradient we shall therefore say m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so when we check nicely between these two points you are able to see that uh, this is our x 1, y, 1, x, 2, y, 2. So find gradient. This will simply be equal to negative 3 minus 0 over 4 minus 0, which of course give us a, a negative 3 over a 4. This is our gradient. Now equation of a straight line, we're going to say y is equal to m x plus a, See, this is a formula, okay? So to find the equation of a straight line, you need this formula for gradient and this one for the actual line. So I can get the points either this or this. So I'll go with this. What is my x-axis or my y-axis? It's a zero. My m here, I just found my m here to be equal to negative three over four. My x here, x-axis, it's a zero. And then we say plus uh, a C. So we have 0 is equal to 0 plus uh, a C. 
our c will be equal to a zero right here okay so once we get that uh, value of c we can say y is equal to m x plus a c so here we maintain the y we just write the m here which is a negative 3 over 4 x plus the c is a zero y is equal to negative 3 over 4 x so this is the equation of a straight line now that we've found the equation of a straight line we can write this is y is equal to negative 3 over 4 x to show the inequality we can say y is great, uh, greater greater or equal to negative 3 over 4 x so y you can see y is greater or equal to negative 3 over 4 x which is uh, this one so when you look at this line look nicely which one is the top part is it this or this this is a top part which is not shaded if you want you can get that and try to move it like this you see that the top part is this side so that's what is not shaded therefore we can say y is greater or equal to um, negative 3 over 4x just like this this is the the answer or these are the answers for question 2 let's go to question 3 and see what we're supposed to do on question number 3 all right so for question number 3 here they want us to calculate the length pq so pq is right here now how do we get to find the length pq the first thing should be to understand the law which we must use so in this case we're supposed to use what we call sign rule and why are we using sign rule it's because we've got uh, two angles under one side so the moment you see two angles and one side just know that you're supposed to use sign rule so what we're going to do here for us to find this side we first need to find an angle right here so what angle is this in this case we're going to say 46 degrees plus 36 degrees this is giving us what when we add 46 plus 36 we are getting a 82 so 82 degrees is the sum of these two angles we can now say 180 degrees minus 82 degrees and this of course is giving us a, a 98 so this is 98 degrees okay i hope that's what you are getting also 98 degrees meaning the angle here it's a 98 degrees i'm pretty sure that's what you are also getting okay all right so once we get this angle we are going to label this is small letter r remember small letters they represent sides while capital letters angles this is small letter p this is a small letter q so to use sine rule we're going to say small letter r over sine capital letter r is equal to small letter p over sine capital letter p so what is our small letter r that's what we are looking for let's see p q over sine capital letter r it's a 98 degrees this one which is equal to small letter p it's a 36.5 over sine 46 degrees capital letter p so we can now cross multiply pq times sine 46 degrees we're getting a pq sine 46 degrees which is equal to 36.5 times sine 98 degrees so here we can simply divide by sine 46 degrees sine 46 degrees both sides so that uh, we remain with pq which is equal to now we get our calculator 36.5 times uh, 
sin tan sin 98 degrees this is giving us uh, a 36.14 478451 we divide by sine 46 degrees so when we divide by sine 46 it's giving us a 50 50. 2471634 three uh, centimeters okay so therefore we can write this in three significant figures like this so this is uh, our pq it's the answer for pq so we now know that our pq is a uh, 50.3 centimeters okay we can now go to the area so area will be equal to come up with the formula because they want us to find the area of triangle p q r so we're going to say one over two r p sine capital letter q so this is how you get to find the area just get one angle the angle which is mentioned this is p i mean q so angle q is what must be after sign huh? after sign so it will be sine q capital letter q and when you use this angle get these two sides you multiply so this is what i've done small letter r capital letter p so r times p and then start with one over two this multiplication of these two sides and then you come and say sine q so what is our small letter r it's a 50 pointer three this is what we've just found and then small letter p that's a 36.5 sign capital letter q it's a 36 okay degrees we simplify further that is a 50.3 times a 36.5 this of course is giving us a 1830 5.95 over a 2 sine 36 degrees. So we now multiply by sine 36 times sine 36. This is giving us a 1079.144334 over a 2. So when we divide by 2, this of course is giving us uh, a 539.572167 centimeters squared of which we can round this off to three significant figures it will be 5.40 centimeters squared like this all right so now the next thing here or the next question is to find uh, shortest distance so the shortest distance from r to pq so they want us to find the shortest distance from this r to pq pq so to find the shortest distance we are of course going to say area is equal to 1 over 2 bh remember formula for finding area of the right angle triangle so where there is a here we are going to put a the area of the triangle the answer that we found here and then say equal to one over two for b the b will be what they have said uh, two pq the length to uh pq so what is the length pq the length pq is 50.3 so we're going to say 50.3 h we now solve for h so we shall cross multiply 540 times 2 it's giving us what a 1080 which is equal to 50.3 h you just cross multiply divide by 50 both sides 50.3 uh, 50.3 so this of course 
when we work out it will be h is equal to when we divide there we're getting a a 21.47117296 centimeters so we can write this in two significant uh, three significant figures it will just be like this and this is our answer so let's check out the last question which is question four where we need to simplify right so we're now on question four this is question four so remember what i said at the beginning of this video i said that uh, we are going to add 10 people to our online classes 2025 gce online classes so be that person who is going to be added by simply answering this question we need 10 people you may be doing your gce 2025 or you just love mathematics or any other grade but you want to be in our online classes answer this question and comment your answer in the comment section okay you comment the answer the first 10 people to answer this question will be added to our online classes and if you want to join our online classes this is a number you can get in touch with us on whatsapp or call will be able to guide you on how you can join our online classes remember we offer online classes in a number of subjects we've got english biology science civic education re commerce accounts additional mathematics and many many more subjects just whatsapp or call us on this number we'll definitely add you to the classes to those who want to use airtel this is a number 0974 63 20 97 Thank you and bye-bye. Uh,